Hello, brethren. I am striking the iron while it's hot. God has told me to continue to uh, release my arrows, release all of them. And so every time I think, okay, I'm done, he will say, no, continue on. Because there may be a time when he tells me to stop. So with that, welcome to Ruach Naeem. Welcome to all of you. To the newest subscribers, I appreciate you. To the older subscribers, I appreciate you. I want to ask you to take time to just make sure you are subscribed. Uh, if you see the notification bell, just hit it so that when a video uploads, you're able to see it uh, right away. And I ask you to simply uh, like, share, and, and again, subscribe. And um, continue to pray for me. So here is a word that... Um, I think I'm going to call it dying to yourself. And um, let me pray. Father, I just thank and I praise you for who you are. I glorify you, Lord, in all that I do. I aim to. In all that I do, I say I live out. I pray that I am a light to the world. Uh, it is your light that they see. And that's my prayer. I continue to decrease that you may increase more and more. And that ties right into this word, even as I say that. So thank you. Thank and praise you for every brother and sister that would see this. Um, those in the family, in your family, and those that are not. I pray for those that are not, Lord, that they would consider what I'm saying. Truly, because it is a matter of life and death. When we leave here, it'll be too late. When we leave earth. So I pray that everyone that's wherever they are in their journey, Lord, that they would make you their choice. And that they will commit to serve you all their days. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So this word um, kind of stems, it stems from uh, on my walk yesterday. I had some things happen in the last few days. And I had an opportunity to become offended. And I got videos on offense and bitterness. Um, and the Lord just reminds me of all of this. And I want you all to know that uh, as long as we are living in this body, even though there are things that God has will allow you to overcome and to heal from, there's always an opportunity um, for us to go back to what we've been delivered from or and or, you know, the enemy will use anything. You know, once I said to the Lord. Man, Lord, the devil is relentless. And I feel like he said, and so are you. You know, we have Jesus Christ, the victor, living inside of us. And so he doesn't, I thought about that. I'm like, he don't sleep. And God says, I don't sleep either. <laughs> I neither slumber nor sleep. And so even though, you know, we need our rest. And so, um, but just, just to say, I was thinking about that and without going into a whole lot of detail because I don't want to make it too long. And all the smaller details don't matter. I'll just say this, that someone shared something with me. And one thing I have developed, and I'm going to encourage you to do, is don't dismiss what people say um, or do. And what I mean by that is take everything to the Lord and say, this goes even for, you know, say you're listening to a message, um, you're in church or whatever, and you hear something and you're really not sure, hmm, is that true? Just ask the Lord and ask him to filter that. He kind of taught me that when I was a teenager. I remember sitting in the church and I don't know why this illustration popped in my head. I'm very visual, so that's probably why. But I saw in my mind, my grandmother, you know, they used to have those flower sifters where they, you know, you actually take it and you go like this and it would make the, the flower more fine. Some of you know what I mean. Um, and it was like he used that to say, just sift it through my word or bring it to me and let me sift it through. So the dross or the waste, the things that are not true or you can't use or don't benefit you, you let them fall by the wayside, but take the meat of it. So I have been developing that and I, I really do try to do that because, you know, we don't see everything about ourselves, right? And so this person uh, said something to me about uh, what they see 
sometimes. And it wasn't, you know, I don't know what the intent was, if it was genuine or not. And that's not my business. And I'm even developing in that area. Like, I can't speak to somebody's heart posture about something. But what I can do is take it to the Lord and let him deal with whatever, you know. Um, but I did ask the Lord. And yesterday on my walk, I was um, just thinking about some things. And then I was listening to a message that it kind of spoke to where I feel I am currently and that is I often say this I've been on sabbatical and in the last couple months I've felt like I haven't like almost like I've let things steal my rest in a way like when I say rest my soul rest my mental rest because my mind is going like okay what's next Lord what's next and you know the enemy will take every opportunity to steal from you whatever it is and so when I heard the message, the word, the thought that came to me was, I'm, I'm siloed. I'm in, a, I'm siloed inside of a silo. So not only am I, has God separated me from some things, but even within that, I feel like there's even this deeper silo happening. It's on purpose. It's for his purposes. It's, to, I believe, to continue to develop me because I truly believe that when you are, in a cave of a doulum, so to speak. I speak about that, coming to the end of yourself. It's almost like I visualize God doing his finishing work and finishing, not like finishing forever. Um, that's Shiloh, you guys. I don't know what she doing. What? <laughs> she having some allergy issues like me. <laughs> but, um, but almost like I picture it like, guys, before I release you into this next, I want to make sure everything's been filtered from your life um, that don't serve you, that you need to get rid of, that you need to, that I'm working out of you, that I'm purifying in you so that you are equipped to, <laughs> that's a word too, equipped to do the next thing, right? And knowing that you, you have to be okay, um, even being on this page, um, I haven't experienced it really, not, not much so far, but you know, you open yourself up to a lot um, just exposing yourself to the world. Um, but being okay with that and having face like Flint, having a face harder than theirs, as that's, those are videos too. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying it because I got a lot of videos out there. But um, even as I speak, it's coming back up. Like God will be developing you for the next thing. So I was walking kind of got that idea from listening to a message. And then I, as I'm listening, saying amen, I was waiting on Shiloh, the puppy, to finish doing her business. And I look up and I see an address on a house. And immediately I knew God was speaking to me because I don't know how far back, if it was last year or two years ago, the first time I noticed this number, it drew me in. That's the only way I can explain it. Well, when I look it up in the Greek Strong Concordance, and I'm going to give you that homework to do it, just type in the number 3744. And it speaks to an aroma, a smell, an odor. And of course, we think of odor. When I hear odor, I think of bad. When I think of sweet smell and savor, I say, that's me. <laughs> anyway, um, but at the same time, I looked over, I thought about, because one of the scriptures it will take you to is the scripture where Lazarus was in the uh, grave and Martha said to Jesus, by now he stinketh. And all of this was almost happening simultaneously. So it was as, as I saw that and I was thinking, and you know, of course, I want to, I hope that my life is a sweet smelling savor, a sacrifice to the Lord. At the same time, I was thinking about dying to self when I saw that scripture and how it produces an odor. And then this connection came for when you die to yourself, you are allowing Christ's life to rise up in you, which is a sweet smelling savor, a sweet smelling smell to the Lord's nostrils. And so that, that it may not seem like it even tied to uh, what I'm gonna get back to this person said, but for me, it was fresh wind on my life that I was making a commitment. Like, you know what, God, I'm gonna if if what that what was said is true, 
help me because that's not what I'm trying to, to be or live out. And so I'm thankful for the comment, whatever, it doesn't even matter the reason why it was said. Um, because I said, Lord, if there's some truth to this, and he did bring me a rhema word, I won't share it, but I, I had to scour through my journal to find it because it came to mind later. And I'm like, wow, you said that to me. And this was April of last year, 2022. And it was saying, don't be like this. And so I asked him to help me. I asked him whatever those areas are. Um, because, and I know you probably, you can't get the problem. Maybe the, I hope you get the meat of what I'm saying without me saying um, what the person said. I'm not going to say it. Not because it, it's anything, you know, evil or bad. It's just, I don't want to go into it. But I will say this. The Lord did show me, yes, sometimes this happens, but he brought me to when I was a little girl. And he said it started then with wanting to be accepted, wanting to please. And it came from a heart, a desire to want to see people happy and things like that. But also what people have been able to do over my life sometimes is manipulate or um, sometimes emotionalize me into me doing what they want. And so he took me back to being this little girl and I did a, a video about the heartbreak and how I said in that moment that that God, that I, that he says, that little girl can't come with you. You have to break up with her. So it was just so beautiful in that moment. I hope this is making sense to, to whoever it's for, that it will bless you, that it will inspire you, that it will let you know that we are works in progress till the day he calls us home, but we should be growing more and more. We have to be willing to accept. Um, now, when something's flat out a lie, you know it is, and you know, the Lord reveals to you that person just had a funky spirit and they were trying to harm you with their words. You can dismiss it. And if that's if he show you that later, great. But try to develop to a place where when someone says something that they see, consider it. Consider that it's true or parts of it. And then ask, take it to the Lord. Because if you desire to grow, you want to be better. You want to be all of what Christ made you to be. And more and more, greater and greater way, we should want to be like the Lord Jesus. That's what we want people to see. Now, will people see you? Of course, because we're in this vessel and we, we're natural creatures. So sometimes we look at things, but it also gives me um, the knowing, continued knowing, to be careful, too, about how you try to sum people up because we don't see the heart. Matter of fact, you don't even know your own heart because the Bible says it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's in Jeremiah. I'll look up the scripture and link it. But this is, I hope this made sense. I just felt like I needed to get it out, the whole dying to ourselves, the whole when you do that, it is a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord because more and more we're supposed to be conformed into the image and likeness of Christ. More and more people should be seeing him lived out through us. Okay, and so that's the main message of this, that it is dying to ourselves, which is a daily thing, I think, to the day he calls us home. And we will always have an opportunity to be offended. We will always have an opportunity to be bitter and angry. And I have made, it, made up my mind that with his help, I won't do that. I won't treat people differently. Um... I just, with his help, I'm saying that. And and just know that sometimes when you're offended, it's your flesh. You know, you're being arrogant or prideful is involved. And so just know we ain't the end all be all. We ain't all that. You know, we, you know, the world tells you that. No, you're not. Um, there is, don't get me wrong, it's not downing yourself. It's understanding who you really are. And even standing up in who you are, know that who you are is all hinged on what Christ did. So continue to stay humble. Pursue humility. Pursue it. Um, and sometimes, too, I'll leave with this. Sometimes, right before your breakthrough, you may be noticing a whole lot. I talked to a sister, my Memphis sister today. It's such a blessing. And just she was sharing some things that as soon as she began to uh, 
put scripture up and make it this room, this one room where she goes into and really press into the Lord more in her life. All hell broke loose. And so she just inspired me by that because it's real. It's a battle, right? And the battle is is in the heavenlies. <laughs> um, and it's also happening in you and around you. So keep your face set like Flint. Trust the Lord God with everything concerning you and others. Pray about everything and do not take offense. Just because offense comes your way doesn't mean you have to grab hold to it and live it out. Live above it. We are seated in heavenly places through in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are not chickens on the ground pecking. We're eagles flying, flying high. And so he said that you'll run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. And, and uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, I think it's 29 through 31. So bless you. Keep flying. Fly high. <laughs> and be above all the pettiness, all of the things that people may try to bring your way, or that I'll say it this way, the enemy will try. And even in yourself, because even if the person or situation comes your way, ask the Lord to show you. And he's so gracious to do it because he wants to make you more like him. When he sees you, when he sees me, you want him to be seeing his son's reflection, not yours. The radiance of Jesus Christ should be flowing all over you in and through you, every day, all day. <laughs> so with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Fly high, be great in the Lord Jesus Christ. Die to yourself so that Christ may rise up in you and live. Live through you. God bless you.